All right, welcome back to the Copywriters Podcast with your host, the world's greatest copywriting coach, David Garfinkel. David, how are you doing today, man? I'm good, Nathan. How are you? I'm good, and for the video viewers, they already know we've got a surprise guest for today's episode. I'm excited to see what we've got in store, and I'm going to hand it off to you. Thanks. Um, Yeah, our guest today is Joshua Lee Henry, a high-powered copywriter with a very interesting career before he started writing copy. That began 12 years ago, the copy part, when Joshua wrote fundraising letters for victims of the 2010 earthquake in Haiti. At the time, he was also a pastor for a megachurch with more than 5,000 members. Fast forward to 2018, when Joshua started freelancing and wrote for big names, including Jay Abraham and Brian Tracy and the Zig Ziglar Corporation. Like a number of high-performing copywriters, Joshua moved under the umbrella of Agora, where he has written promotions that have made millions. And these days, he's copy chief for Money and Markets, an imprint of Agora's fast-growing Banyan Hill Company. After I spoke at Brian Kurtz's Mastermind a few weeks ago, where Joshua had previously spoken, Joshua reached out to me with an idea that was truly mind-boggling. How to structure a lead that gets and keeps 100% of a qualified prospect's intention. I'm not sure he put it exactly that way, but that's what I took away from it. Joshua offered to share his structure with you on the show, and I said yes, just as I am sure you'll say yes to this. Copy is powerful. You're responsible for how you use what you hear in this podcast, and most of the time, common sense is all you need. But if you make extreme claims, and if, or if you're writing copy for offers in highly regulated industries like health, finance, and business opportunity, you may want to get a legal review after you write before you start using your copy. My larger clients do this all the time. So, Joshua, welcome. Thank you, David. Glad to be here. I, uh, I am pumped for our conversation today. Yeah, me too. And I'd like to say with with your process for leads, you've taken some well-known copy elements, added some of your own, and come up with something truly bold and audacious. Could you tell us about it and, and walk us through some examples? Absolutely. And, you know, the genesis for this came, uh, you know, training the copywriters on my team and, and bringing new copywriters on and teaching them the fundamentals of copywriting and specifically how to write re-leads and, and how to really get a lead up to snuff so we can decide if there's a promo there. And uh, I don't have anything fancy in terms of a title for this. I probably should come up with a great copywriting title, you know, but uh, it's, it's simply called the six things your lead must do. And uh, there are six things. Uh, I give the the guidance that the lead is roughly the first 700 to 1,000 words, usually no more than 1,000. At that point, you're starting to drift into, uh, you know, maybe background on the guru. But I want to stop and, and just, you know, if people are hearing this, they're thinking 1,000 words. Oh, my goodness. You know, this these six principles are applicable to long form copy the way that we write in Agora. Uh, but they're also applicable to emails. I was reviewing several emails this morning for new promotions, and these same principles could be applied to short form copy like emails, lift notes, even space ads, uh, whether that's online or offline in print journals and whatnot. And so as we're going through these, I just want to make that clear up front. Um, but these are the six things that your lead must do. And, and really the first one shouldn't be a surprise, but it's grabbing attention with a pattern interrupt. That pattern interrupt needs to grab them by the eyeballs immediately. And so for your copy to your prospect, you need to have, um, if it's a, if there's a visual involved, like a picture in an ad, or if it's a video, a VSL, there needs to be something there visually that complements the copy. It needs to be interesting and intriguing. It needs to build curiosity and open a loop. And it needs to tie directly into the big idea uh, or, or the what's in it for me, you know, uh, the, the WIFFM, you know, what's in it for me or t- two eyes there. I always get the uh, everybody's favorite radio station, right? You know, what's in it for me? And uh, that picture, it, it could be something that comes from um, the product itself. You know, maybe it's a device in the product. Maybe it's a blueprint of the product. Maybe it's uh, just something completely 
uh, separate from the product, but ties into the hook. And so the example that I have uh, from one of my recent promos, uh, this was a back end that was very successful for our franchise. It opened with the host showing a briefcase full of money. And the first line of copy in the VSL was inside this briefcase is $100,000. Now, if I show you a, a picture of a briefcase, you know, a video of a briefcase and you're a prospect interested in some investment research and you see a, a, a nice, you know, host uh, with a briefcase full of money, th that's one of those things that are going to grab your eyeballs and, and think, you know, what's here? What, what is this? There's another popular VSL running right now in the health space. Uh, for a for a dental a dental offer, and it opens with this this skull, and this archaeologist in the desert, and and, and the copy says this is a pair of twenty five hundred year old teeth from one of our ancestors, and the the copy continues to say you know e even though uh, toothbrushes and uh, toothpaste and dentist didn't exist back then these teeth are in perfect condition and now here is a picture of somebody's teeth of a 40 year old you know healthy male who brushes regularly you know flosses after every meal and it's this juxtaposition of of what you know the skull this teeth that is you know 2500 years old in perfect shape and yet you know here's uh teeth of a modern man that look like you know they're they're falling out and they're decayed and so those visuals, again, we've got a front end that opens with the blueprint of a very futuristic machine. And in the promo, we end up revealing that it's actually a DNA sequencing machine. But when you mm. first see it you, in, in the, the copy reads, th this machine is going to create, you know, 25 times more wealth than the Internet did. And you're instantly hooked on it, you know. Well, th th this is great. Um, I, I want to point something out um, about what you're doing, which I, which I love, by the way. These are pattern interrupts, but the original pattern interrupts and in VSLs, as far as I know, uh, were for uh, some dating apps where they would say, this is a goldfish and, yeah. and this goldfish will show you why you can get laid or something like that. Um, and and I, I don't know, I guess there are people who are into goldfish fetishes, but for the most part, that doesn't really have much to do with the topic. What I love about the pattern interrupts you're talking about is they're certainly not what you expect. They're certainly not, um, you know, strictly in line with what you're really going to be talking about. But they're they're easily connectable. The transition isn't a big heavy lift. No, you know, and especially when we talk about long form copy, I, I often say that the lead is the trailer for the movie. Well, if the lead is the trailer for the movie, the pattern interrupt, that first five, 10 sentences, that first 150 words, you know, people speak about 150 words a minute, those first 50 words or so, that is the movie poster. Okay. So That's if really your good. lead if your lead is the movie trailer, the pattern interrupt is that movie poster. What do you see in the lobby of the theater? That's great. Let's move on to your second point about yep. big and crazy. Big, crazy numbers. OK, so in the financial space, the area where I work in mostly right now, um, you know, people want to see big numbers fast. It's the old it was it Jerry Maguire. Show me the money, you know, get to the money fast. And so um, but taking this outside of financial, this could also be uh, anything that's going to make an emotional impact on your prospect. And so it could be a fact, a stat, a data point, a percentage. Um, if we're talking about weight loss, it might be, you know, how to lose 10 pounds overnight or within 48 hours. You know, that's so big and so crazy and so benefit driven for the prospect that it, it sucks them in even deeper into that lead. Uh, it could be, you know, if you're a power lifter, how to increase 25 pounds to your deadlift tomorrow. You know, something where there's that short time period where they're thinking tomorrow or 48 hours and this addition of adding 25 pounds to their deadlift or losing five pounds overnight, whatever the case may be. When we're talking about finance, it's going to be things like, you know, how to make a 260% option trade in 48 hours. And so you've got the two kind of crazy numbers there. You got the crazy fast number of 48 hours, and you've got this crazy big number of 262%. You know, it takes most mutual funds 20 years to make these kind of gains, but you can make them in just two days. Do you see what yeah. I'm saying? Yeah, I, I I like the way you're explaining that. It it, it makes it makes a lot of sense. Your your third one, everybody's rock, everybody's um, burden, but the sort of the key to success, right? Building credibility. 
Absolutely. And and I want to make a, a slight distinction here between credibility and believability. Credibility, you know, credibility come, you know, think of credentials. These are third party sources, uh, third party um you know, an MBA from Harvard or a CFP if you're a financial advisor or a PhD, if, you know, if you're having a, a, a doctor in your promo or something. Um, and believability is really where the prospect comes to their own conclusions and sees how your promise can benefit them and they believe it. They accept that premise. And so it's possible and it's probable for them. And so, uh, you know, an example from one of my financial promos is that the CEO of Google says AI will be bigger than the invention of fire. And Bank of America says AI will spur the fastest rollout of disruptive tech in history, um, right? And, and so, an example for a uh, you know a a non financial based uh, promo, the way that we think about it in Agora world, would be that a 2020 Northwestern Mutual study found that 71 percent of U.S. adults admit their financial planning needs improvement, but only 29 percent of them actually work with an advisor. And so they're contrasting there. And, and I also want to mention that in this example, you're tying both the credibility of the Northwestern Mutual study along with this big, crazy number point that we just discussed uh, as the second thing that your lead must do. So these work together. Sometimes you can have all six of these in the same sentence or the same subject line if it's an email. Yeah. Um, let's talk about this a little more because you know, there, there's a little bit of a curse of knowledge problem in the writer's head with credibility if, if they're not experienced or if they're distracted or something, you know. But especially if they're really in love with what they're writing about, they know it's great. They know it's true. Why should anyone doubt them? Do, do, you, ever, do you ever talk to copywriters about that and say, you need to get in your writer, reader's head about this? You know, I, I do. And, and in fact, um, sometimes, you know, a lot of copy is is good editing. Good, you know, good copy is good editing. Good copywriting is good editing. And sometimes you have so much information that it just kind of gets in the way of the promise. It gets in the way of the benefit. And so even though you have all these facts and stats and numbers and things like I'm talking about studies from Harvard or Stanford or whoever, you know, quotes from Elon Musk, you have to strip that down. Just give me three of the strongest pieces of proof. Your proof is only as strong as your weakest link, right? And so if you've got incredible proof points, this other stuff becomes clutter. It becomes distracting. It becomes roadblocks and hurdles in front of the sale, keeping your prospect from buying. And so you have to eliminate that stuff. And so you really have to use discernment in what, what data, what facts, what things build your credibility. And when you're so close to it, you, you know, we do all this research and we want to cram everything that we find into our promos and that, or, or our emails or our, the ads or whatever. And just space doesn't allow that. People don't have time for that. Give me the number one thing that I need to know to believe what you're saying so I can buy. Tell me what action I need to take today. That, that's that's great. So what's your next step? Or the next fourth. One, yeah, the, the fourth. We're on four of six. Uh, this would be teasing, not explaining, not full detail, but teasing the catalyst that's making this opportunity available today. What is happening right now that makes me, you know, that, that makes this opportunity available for me to jump in head first? What is it? It could be a new government bill. You know, it could be something, you know, uh, some, um, uh, you know, there, there's a lot of stuff happening in Europe right now. There is some news yesterday about, uh, you know, again, I, I work in financial and there is some news uh, at the time we were recording this with OPEC and oil prices. And so there are a lot of uh, energy companies, renewable energy companies that are projected to take off. Well, this, this OPEC uh, fiasco is what's driving these energy companies up. It could be something like a midterm election, a hard deadline. It could be a, a Medicare deadline that you have to sign up for annual enrollment. Otherwise, you're you're going to miss this deadline. So it, it could be a number of things. It could be a new patent uh, that was just approved by the U.S. Patent Office where there's this new technology. There has to be something. Is it a company acquisition? Is it a new CEO? Is it a new technology that's going to change the world? What is the catalyst that is creating urgency for me to act today? I have a question about that real quick. Yeah. Sometimes we have an offer that goes for six months, eight months, maybe a year and a half before it finally goes stale. If you're taking into consideration, what's the catalyst? Why do you need to act on this right now? How do you take that into consideration with also the fact that this offer is killing it and I don't want to kill it right now because it's making so much money? 
That, you know, that's a good question. And uh, it's funny because in, in financial, again, the kind of the world that I know, we run these promos for, you know, I've got promos that I wrote for, for uh, you know, previous Agora companies two years ago that are still running. And so there's this balance of keeping it evergreen and urgent at the same time. What's amazing is, is that if that catalyst has passed, if the promise is big enough and the proof is there, people will continue to buy even after the fact. And so uh, there's been a lot of things here recently, promos around the Fed's rate hikes. Even after the rate, Fed's rate hikes, people are still continuing to buy. And so, you know, I would say if it keeps work, if it's working, don't fix it. You know, if, it, if it's working, don't fix it. Um, but at some point, you, you will need to have, you know, to freshen up that copy, uh, that ad. But it, it is interesting because I think people have short memories. Um, if you again, if the opportunity is clear and the promise is there, and you've got the proof, people will continue to buy even after the, after the, is, is, like you can't do a, an elections promo in January because midterms happen in November. So the, like that doesn't work. But you know what I mean. Like if the technology was approved in in January and here we are in in March or April, I think people would still be buying into that early phase adopter opportunity. Okay. Yeah, that's that's a good answer. Okay. Um, so, yeah, one one comment I wanted to make is you said catalyst or mechanism, and I think that's really important. Some products don't really have a mechanism that's that's big enough to tease, um, but a catalyst can just be a particular date, an event, um, a deadline, or uh, the prospect of something happening. And and I, I like the flexibility of that that step, that piece of it. Yep. You know, I don't write much uh, health stuff or I've never written in supplement space, but I was having a talk with somebody the other day in the supplement space and they said that that mechanism can often be one ingredient in the product, in the pill, in the supplement, or it could be the combination of these ingredients that you put them together. And so that was something for me that I'm thinking, okay, when I'm writing systems promos for finance, that might just be one element of the mechanism that I tease or the system that I tease, or it could be the combination. And so number five is zigzag. And this is really my favorite because I think what this does is it, it, it sets you apart from the crowd. So when everybody else is doing this, the guru or your product or whatever, they do that. So when everybody else is doing this, the guru does that. It builds curiosity, mystique, a contrarian perspective. It goes against the grain. It makes the guru different and better. Um, and, and so the example would be, you know, I'm going to teach you how to make triple digit gains in 48 hours without, you know, trading options or without gambling on cryptos or without speculating on IPOs. Well, you know, how do you do it? You know, I, you know, I, you know, that, that, that gets explained in the promo, but it's all about the tease right here. And so I think that's, I think it's really key because everybody knows how to lose weight, eat less, exercise more. Everybody knows how to get ahead financially. Save, you know, spend spend less than you make, you know, save, you know, 10% of what you earn. People don't want common wisdom. People don't want what everybody else knows. They're looking for a hack. They're looking for a shortcut. They're looking for some kind of secret knowledge. They're, they're looking for an answer to why they haven't achieved what they want. Who's to blame? You know, everybody, if you want mediocre result, results, do what everybody else is doing. They, they don't want to do what everybody else is doing. They're looking for that hack that shortcut that's going to get them this result without having to put in the work and get it faster. Okay, that, that's really good. And then the, uh, the big daddy, number six. This is really the demonstration of proof. And so this is all again in your lead. You need to show, don't tell. Um, in financial, we do that a lot of times, especially on back end promos by giving track record examples, you know, big gains from the actual track records. But this could also be a physical demonstration. You know, in my library behind me, I've got the biography from the guys that wrote the Ginsu knives. Those old knives, you know, like the swords, they would chop a pop can in half and they would, you know, cut a roll of quarters or whatever. And, and, you know, that demonstration is really the most powerful proof that you can have. You know, it's the George Foreman grills on the infomercials. Um, but that demonstration, you just want to tease that proof. And again, that might be a demonstration of the mechanism. Okay. That might be a demonstration of the guru doing that zigzag, this trading pattern that nobody else knows about, but it sucks your prospect further into the story and it allows them to visualize themselves in that story. So again, it adds to the believability aspect of it. 
Do you have some examples? Um, I, of I do. You know, this is an example from a SaaS coaching business where there was a testimonial on the sales page that said, grow your annual recurring revenue by 9% in July. Uh, this is a testimonial. And we added $285,000 in new ARR from inbound sales. And so what happens is with the testimonials, just like a character in a fiction story, the reader sees themselves as the protagonist, you know, protagonist or the main character. In these testimonials, if if the view, if the prospect is really the right prospect for that product, they're going to see that their own story in the story of that testimonial if it's written well. And so that allows them to again believe that your product and, and the solution you provide is possible for them. And and do you have another one? These are I do. There, there's, an example from, there, there's an example from an FBA course. You know, my brother-in-law runs a very successful uh, FBA business. And uh, I went to the sales page for the product where he got his training from. And, uh, and there was a great testimonial. It said, this week we hit $8,000 for the last 30 days. And I know we have just scratched the surface. And, and so- I think a franchise brokers association. I'm sure that's not. Oh, I'm sorry. That's fulfillment by Amazon. So that's a, a oh, yeah. big. Okay. That's another world of the internet marketing space that I don't really have a lot of experience in personally. But I know you know for copy for ecom and things like that, uh, it, it's a very popular uh, opportunity space. And so uh, those demonstrations of proof, though, whether it's testimonials, track record results, um, demonstration of your product. Uh, you know, if maybe there's a patent that you have, you know, that patent could be proof. Uh, there could be the credentialing could be proof. Uh, all of that stuff uh, works. They, they all work together, you know. Yeah. I'm going to jump in real quick. Uh, so I used to have a friend who sold who went door to door selling vacuum cleaners. And one of the things that was the most powerful selling point for her is when she would walk in, she'd be like, OK, I'm going to turn this vacuum on just to show you how quiet it is. We'll have this discussion while it's running. I'm going to put this filter in it. And at the end, I'm going to take the filter out and show you all of the dust and dirt that's in your air. And so she'd turn the, the vacuum on. It'd be sucking through a filter. And at the end of the conversation, whether they were sold or not, she would turn the vacuum back off. They would realize how quiet it was. And then she'd pull the filter out and it'd just be gunked with black filth. And that was her biggest selling point. Whether she did good while she pitched it, whether she did good during the conversation or not, it always was that proof, that demonstration at the end when she pulled that filter out and people were like, holy crap, I've been breathing that. I need to buy this vacuum. That's really exactly. Good. You know, it's why Costco gets the free samples, you know, in their warehouses, you know, t taste and see. Mm -hmm. I, I just hope that the filter didn't have that gunk on it before she started vacuuming. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, uh, Joshua, you have something you're part of called the world of financial copywriting. And you're going to offer listeners an opportunity to get into that. Absolutely. So this is something that I, I've got a partnership with Kevin Rogers uh, from Copy Chief on. And, and so uh, we've created this opportunity. And what we have done is we tested it with Banyan Hill, my franchise, and it has been so successful at placing copywriters into the world of financial copy that we are now working with other Agora imprints um, across the, the big Agora brand. There's it's like those Russian dolls. There's a doll inside of a doll inside of a doll. There's a company inside of a company inside of a company in the Agora world. And even today, I heard from the uh, publisher of International Living um, uh, that they want to work with us in, in getting some more copywriters in. And so oh, excellent. Um, in, inside the Agora world, you know, it's mainly health and finance. And there are a lot of people that have just never even considered finance as an opportunity, as a niche, because they've been intimidated by it. But, you know, we've created the World of Financial Copywriting Club to help people learn what this financial copy world looks like, how to write, you know, everything from lifts and advertorials and space ads to full-fledged promos. And then we're helping them interview because interviewing in and of itself is a demonstration of your ability to persuade and you know the, the the way that you write that cold email to a publisher you know that shows your copy expertise um, and so we're showing them and teaching them how to interview and get hired and how to work out what that arrangement might look like whether that's a w2 whether that's a royalty a uh, split on sales uh, and so we are actually recruiting training and placing copywriters 
with these Agora brands. And again, we've been doing it at Money Map. I've been referring writers to uh, obviously Banyan Hill, International Living, Stansberry, even some of these quasi used to be Agora companies that are still, you know, uh, sister companies related. And so for anybody that's interested, you know, we've gotten a link, I believe we'll put in the show notes uh, to find out more information on that, because I really believe financial copywriting, it has a reputation for being uh, the most lucrative and also the most competitive, you know, the most difficult to write, but there's this constant need for financial copy every day. And there's a wealth of opportunities available to you if you're interested. Great. Well, we'll put that in the show notes and um, somebody wants to contact you personally. Is that okay? Do you want to? Uh, Absolutely. Email? Yeah. So my email is my first middle last name. You know, there's the old joke about never trusting a guy with uh, two first names. I've got three first names, you know, Joshua Lee Henry. So I don't know what that means, but uh, okay. Joshua Lee Henry at activate my advertising.com. Yeah, and okay. I am the only Joshua Lee Henry on LinkedIn as well. So there, you know, if you want to contact me that way, that's fine. Yeah, activatemyadvertising.com. I think I said gmail.com. I don't I have no Gmail. I don't know if I said that or not, but Joshua Lee Henry at activatemyadvertising.com. Sounds good. Awesome. Joshua, thank you so much for coming on. This has been a fascinating and awe-inspiring conversation. So I appreciate both of you for putting it together. And if you, the listener, enjoyed this and you want to get your hands or your ears on more episodes, head over to copywriterspodcast.com. And until next time, we will catch you later. Catch you later. Thanks, Joshua. Thanks, guys.